<laughs> you know, it was funny. I didn't even have the the no, text. No, but it's okay. Uh, so <laughs> welcome to <laughs> Turning <Trench> Ground, <laughs> where we're not prepared to do it. No, we are wow. like mentally, but we actually didn't like prepare to like read the blurb. Well, it's um, new software. Yeah, That's, it's throwing it's throwing everything off. But it's the second time yeah. we used it. I honestly, I've no recollection of the first time we used this. It was that seamless that you didn't even notice. It's crazy. Man. I don't. I just. I don't really remember anything before like a week ago. All right. Is it? Is it, is uh, it Asian? Are you? Are you getting dementia? <laughs> yeah. No, I've just been shooting too much. Uh, training ground. You asked for it. You get it. Ryu and I will rip your photos into smithereens. Hold on to your headphones. Here comes the pain. It's a very quiet pain today. Um, this is Training Ground, the part of the conglomerate uh, of Big Lens Flash Shutter, where we demystify the world of sports photography. If you're interested in actually learning more about sports photography, um, I'll, I, we get quite a lot of emails asking, like, how do you do this, blah, blah, Please go to BigLensFastShutter.com, and there will be just plenty of stuff, like six, seven years worth of stuff that you can go through, and you can learn everything about sports photography. Uh, and mind you, we are the only people who actually teach how to shoot sports photography on the podcast and on YouTube, and that's about it. I think we should uh, further explain and I don't know, don't send us email asking a question about how to do something in sports photography. The, the whole reason we're doing this is so that we can help a lot of people at once instead of responding to email by email with a lot of questions that we've already answered. So help us by searching through the archives There are what eight years of blog posts and podcasts at biglensfastshutter.com and if you can't find it there uh, I would be very surprised and if you can't find it there really then you can join us on Patreon uh, give us $5 a month and then you can ask questions in the Flickr group and we'll answer it on the podcast which also helps us with our income it also helps us answering questions that help more people helps us with our time so let's do it that way uh, the Patreon is patreon.com slash BLFS and the Flickr group is go to flickr.com and search for Big Lens Fashioner. And there are a lot of people in there in the community who will be very, very happy to help you out. So let's get on with this. Um, the first picture is from Todd Falasco, and it's a very rare one because we don't really get that many lacrosse pictures. I'm fine. Lacrosse with is really, really difficult to shoot. It's like hockey, isn't it? Uh, it's worse than hockey because. Uh, you know, you can, they run behind the goal, so you have to be really far behind the goal. And then no, yeah, even if you're difficult. really far behind the goal, you can still get hit with a shot, and those balls hurt quite a bit if you get hit with them. Oh, God. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of uh, moving in between. It has the hockey thing of people moving in between you and whoever you're shooting a lot. Um, yeah, lacrosse is hard. This is fine as far as it goes, but... What I would what I would say about this picture is it's fine that you got it. It's fine that you were shooting from here and that you had the idea to shoot the guy directly shooting on the goal. That's all fine. What I would say is that what's more important, having the ball in there or having his stick in there, and I would prefer having the stick. I, I don't like how the stick is behind the goalie and behind the goal like that. Um, it's not a deal breaker. It doesn't mean that that automatically makes it a bad picture. It's just something that I would prefer. Um, the ball is fine, but whatever. Uh, the part that I really don't like is how his leg gets cut off there. And I just think that that would, you know, you could just crop it up higher. I, I just, I don't think you need all that extra room below where the ball is. Just, you know, crop it to the ball, crop it to his head and get enough of the goal in there to make it uh, two by three and call it a day. Mm. It's kind of hard for me to say. I need to actually look at a bit more with this. Um, yeah, like, I think uh, it's the classic is not slow enough thing for me with this. That if you're going to, and the thing is, like, it's it's like, you know, like running back with a ball or it's like, I don't know, soccer player, like, 
dribbling the ball or basketball player dribbling it's just like a one of those things that it happens all the time like this is a guy with the ball you can't really see the racket because the shutter is slow i don't really mind that but he's not really doing anything spectacularly interesting so even if you slow it down like this and if you pan it this, this is nothing really interesting going on so and also the matt cohen's pet peeve of like this not being slow enough and that's the case here i think it looks like is there a metadata for this it's 40th of a second yeah that's 40th of a second yeah. that's not even panning i no. mean that's not even panning in motorsports so yeah that's that's not slow enough yeah. so here's what i'll say about panning uh unpredictable things like there's a difference between panning motorsports or panning track and field where you can reasonably predict the direction and the speed and all of that it's harder to do hockey or basketball or lacrosse or football or anything like that because it's unpredictable because people don't run in straight lines because they don't run in right angles all of that so you have to think of it as what is an acceptable result and what i want to see is if you're something has to be an outlier in the picture something has to be maxed all the way out either it's so slow that everything looks like a complete dream world or it's such an amazing moment that it doesn't matter that you were at a 40th of a second or that you were at a slower speed but you didn't exactly get everything matching the speed right so when you let's just take this picture and what was happening here which is basically just two guys running right if you were at a fifth of a second and you matched everything perfectly then you know there's no background right there's no football goal posts there's no soccer goal posts there's no cars in the parking lot there's no school there's no wire all of that all that goes away because you were at a fifth of a second and somehow you managed to to get them both right i would say okay that's a good effort it wouldn't be a great picture because they wouldn't be doing anything of note, but you would have executed it in, in the best way that you possibly could. Now, let's go to a great play or maybe it's a running back who's diving over a pile of defenders or something like that. And it's a little bit off. You know, your your speed was a little bit off or the direction was a little bit off or something like that. But it was very clearly a running back jumping over a pile of guys and it was very slow and you got him going into the end zone to score the winning touchdown. Then that would be fine. But what you have here is not slow enough and not interesting enough. And because it's not slow enough, you've also let in too much of the background. So you have to pick one of these things to really execute you know preferably more like you would want a, you know a really excellent slow panning shot of a great moment but you know you have to kind of work your way up to things like that or get very lucky so what i would want to see is if you're going to work on things like this that are very mundane and just you know low probability of a great event happening then you really do need to slow it all the way down and see if you can just make art at that point mm. um so you know just just the fact of slowing the shutter down isn't enough you need to it really needs to be a pretty picture it really needs to be an important moment or it needs to be both uh this is an inlay and this <laughs> is uh i actually thought like when i first saw this picture i thought it was actually like a real person and a ch like child and a father i thought it was right i thought it was it. i thought somebody had mistagged it and i, I didn't yeah, even yeah, see yeah. The, the bicycle the bicycle i thought it was in here by mistake <laughs> And I think like herein lies a bit of a problem in that you have to kind of like it's a double take, but like not in a really good way, double take that like you have to see it. So, so why is the sports photograph? And you realize that there are people cycling in the background um, with things like this. You have to make it a bit not like <clears throat> Because obviously, like, it's not also a good thing either, but... There has if, to be a reward, right? It doesn't have to be obvious, but once you find it, it has to be worth it that you found it. And it's definitely not with this one. No. No. And, and I can save everybody a whole lot of time, I think, right here, right? Look at... I do this thing where, you know, I, I think in numbers, right? Not art. I think, you know, in percentages and stops of light and distances and angles and things like that 
And one of my huge pet peeves are when the the size of a picture and the percentage of the pixels in that picture are devoted to something that I don't want to look at, right? So set aside that that statue is creepy. Uh, it's creepy. It's like you know, in the uncanny valley of being like it's too real but not real. You know, take that out. Forget about that. I'm looking at the crabgrass and the you know the patchy dirt and whatever that's in that circle around them, right? I mean, there could have been, you know, flaming bicycles at night or something going in the back there. I still wouldn't want to look at that. You have to, when you're in that situation and you're framing all of this, it's not just the objects that are in there. It's, you know, if there was like a water bottle or something that somebody had left on the ground or a piece of trash or something, I, I wouldn't want to look at that either. But this having, you just, you have to minimize that. I'm not saying that, it has to not be there at all or something like that, but you have to recompose around this so that 15% of your picture isn't patchy grass and dirt and, you know, weeds or whatever. Like you just can't do that. Yeah. No, it's just like, I understand like why you wanted to do it, but like, it's kind of missing the point. You it's know. it's too like, like, you know, let's be real about this picture. And I'm not saying never, I'm just saying that looking at this, what would be going through my head is I really wish that statue was in the grass that was right next to the street instead of in the grass that was 10 feet away from the street. Yeah, it is a bit too far. You, I think that's you the thing can't, as well. You, there, there is a physical limitation to these things. And that limitation in this case is the distance and the perspective. If you're shooting something that's on the street and you're trying to put something in the picture that's like, I don't know, 30 feet away is that 10 yards that's 10 yards between where the statue is and where those bikes are that's too far you know it's just it's too far for what you're trying to do and so that's what that's what would be going through my head when i was composing all of this is i want to shoot something if i'm going to get something that's not in the race in the frame with the people who are racing it has to be a lot closer or it has to be like a mountain or something you know it has to be like really big or something like that so yeah but it's like yeah, your eyes only goes towards the statue and like it never goes towards the bike and it's a fail in that respect. So it's all about the statue and like nothing about the bikes. Yeah. I this is by Toin um Oshodi. I think just kind of at this point in his career, I want him to do a bit more. Because it's just like if I take this out of context, not out of context, I just like take Neymar out and I put someone else in. It's just a football player with a lot of people around him and that's it. It's fine as a photo, but I just kind of want him to like want to do more because this yeah. is just too I, yeah, like, I, I, I think, stuff. You know, yeah, divorcing, you know, our advice overall for Toy and, Ver you know, this picture is fine. This is like one of those pictures that would actually run a lot, I'm sure. You know, like this, if he was hooked up, you know, with good distribution or something like that, I could see this picture running everywhere because it's one of those like Sports Illustrated oddity kind of pictures. And then those get picked up in a picture million other places. Yeah. 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 Stuff like that, because, yeah, the guy was getting his shorts pulled off. Um, so it's fine as a picture. But, yeah, in general, I think uh, Toyin is at a level now where it's time to start taking more risks whether that's like, you know, I don't know, it, it, let's say he continues dribbling at you and you just sh keep shooting with the 400 instead of switching over or instead of, you know, going towards the goal or something like that, like live on the edge a little bit. Like, you know, now we're, we're at the point where you're fitting everything in and everything is a little bit too stock and it, you know, it looks fine, but you need to, you need to find the edges a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And these are old pictures. You know, these are, these are not, you know, I'm not super interested in seeing uh, old pictures, really. I mean, this, this is about getting better. This, you know, we should be talking about what you're doing now versus ago. what you could be doing uh, what what's nine months ago. Yeah. Um, you know, I, w I want to see what you're doing right now so that we can say, no, go back and do this the next time you go shoot, not stuff that's nine months old. I, I don't need it. That's 
fine. I <laughs> I've seen these pictures so many times that I just have to say it's fine. Like I don't really get hard looking at it, thinking yeah, about you know. I would just say, um, if you're gonna do this, right? So this being out of focus batter with in focus pitcher and get, getting the ball, you mm-hmm. know, that's the the type of picture we're talking about. Try to do something with it, right? Do something with the the composition. Move around. Um, I know there's not a whole lot of room, and there's not a whole lot of angles that you can choose from, but maybe. Um, shoot the pitcher's face through the batter's arms or the gap in the bat or something like that. But if if you're taking a known picture, which this is, right, you're, you're, this is like a form, um, try to figure out how to put your own take on it. Don't just say, oh, yes, I can get that picture. Hmm. Okay, fine, you can get it, but let's see, uh, you know, let's see you breaking some of the rules. Let's see... Um, you know, a little bit of thought. Let's see, you know, instead of it being so straightforward, let's see it be a little bit more obscure than this, like block more of the pitcher's body with the umpire or the batter or something. But, you know, let's see some thought go into this that makes it your picture instead of you just getting a picture that's been done a million times. I mean, I understand like people kind of want to do like things that they've seen in other websites or whatnot, Uh but like, yeah, I mean, like Matt said, like you kind of have to like think, okay, well, I know I can actually do this. And it's like one of those things that like if Bishop is going to throw, I don't know, let's say 50 pitches, you basically get 50 chances doing this. You know what I mean? Like once it's done, it's done. So it's like, right. I would like to have actually seen, because of the fact that baseball is a quite a stationary sport where they don't move that much. Like the pitchers don't move, <clears throat> the batters don't move. So it's quite easy to get timing done. Like once you do it a couple of times, you get like, okay, this is the time I just have to press the button, blah, blah, blah. I just, you know, roll out 10 shots and here it is. I actually get one. But yeah, it's kind of like, I would like to see a bit more creativity behind it and say, okay, well, I can do this. But how about if I do that? You know, same position, like Matt said, or a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. The reason, the reason this is all important <clears throat> is that, you know, this is still, even if you're not directly competing with someone else, you're competing for people looking at your pictures online. You're competing for, you know, your name meaning something. And if you can figure out how, you know, when you're dropped in this situation, like a newspaper calls you and they say, go to this uh, Colt League game or something like that and get a, you know, get us 10 pictures of the pitcher or something. What you do with that versus what somebody else does is that's everything, right? Your, Your value over and above somebody else is what defines, you know, what you get, the work you get, you know, whatever, how people think about your name when they think about your pictures. And... I don't, you know, I, I would want to come out with like at least eight pictures that nobody else would do out of 10, yeah. right? Maybe that's very high, but you know, that's the standard that I would hold myself to. You should, you know, if you're not me or something like that, you know, let, let's shoot for half, you know, I would want to make half of those pictures absolutely mine. And, uh, you know, let the other person be lazy, let the other person do only pictures that he's seen uh, in a in a newspaper or a magazine or something like that, and let you think beyond that to what can I do to add value over and above somebody else who would be here, over and above the guy who's next to me, over above the you know thirty other people that are at a college football game. You know that's what it's all about. So just doing a picture that you've seen in a magazine, it's it's fine to teach yourself. It's fine to look at the picture and then say, oh, I noticed that they're like even in this picture, like look right inside of the arm in the hands of the batter, like you can see part of the pitcher's um, belt and you know his, his pants where the belt goes through that's still in focus. So there are possibilities that you you know you could move around, you could work with that yellow line as the border of the picture or something like that. Like there's a lot of different things that you could do to make this picture yours rather than just doing this. So if this was your first chance to try this or whatever, that's fine. But what I want to see is moving beyond this and saying, you know, not saying, oh, yes, look at what I can do. Yeah, that's fine. You know, it's not that hard. Lots of people can do this, you know, with with a little bit of practice. What comes next is 
you putting your name on it. Uh, by the way, when we record a podcast, ask me about the Women's World Cup. Are you talking to Reed or me? To you. Okay, I don't think I'll remember that. No, because you have dementia. I understand, but like it's, uh, <laughs> I just, I realized that like I have to talk about that one. Anyway, okay. Right. This is much better. Yeah, this is quite exciting. I like, I like it. It's, it's yeah. good. It's really this, like, I could just kind of feel it, you know? Right. Let's be real. This has no business being here. And I think, you no. know, that should be pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but that's, that's what we're looking yeah, yeah. for. Mm. Okay, there are mm. there are many 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 things wrong with this. Um, Brooke, Brooke, is that is that her real name? Like book laughter? Uh, was that like she's kind of like made a fake name out know. of her name? I don't know. Let's yeah, let's not do that. Right. Uh, okay. But it's Brooke laughter, so, by the way, Brooke. <laughs> first of all, uh, my the weirdest thing happens when people shoot barrel races. Uh, and what that means is they think about, okay, where am I going to shoot the barrel from and where's the rider going to be between me and the barrel or whatever. And lots of times people just completely don't notice that there's a big John Deere tractor that's green with yellow wheels, uh, in the background or, um, you know, a huge billboard or the sun (laughs) or, um, in this case, uh, uh, lighting pole or can't do that right well. like, yeah like this is unfortunate that that they chose to put that right in the middle of the arena like that and it's behind one barrel and behind another barrel I, I get it it's not ideal but you have to remember that if you're shooting a barrel race the barrel doesn't move and so if there's something behind the barrel that's going to be in every picture and I don't think you want a pole to be splitting the frame of the picture every single time. Uh, that's, that's for one. Second, you want to find an angle that's more interesting than what somebody who was standing outside the arena was looking at. This is exactly what a tall person who is standing outside the fence would see. And your job as a photographer is to take the access, however close you can get to what you're shooting and make it look like things that people who are watching from outside the rail or on TV or other people's pictures or whatever, you want all that to look different and better and more interesting. So what does that mean? Higher, you know, up on a ladder, you know, in a building or something, shooting down, laying on the ground, shooting up, uh, you know, using a lens that has, um, you know, is, is either tighter than what somebody would see with their own eyes or wider than what they would see with their own eyes. This is basically what you would see with your own eyes. Um, so you're not setting yourself up for success by where you chose the shot and what you chose for the background and the elevation that you were at and the lens and all of that. So it, it really is back to the drawing board here. Um, you know, I would definitely say, um, you know, maybe do a, do a search for barrel racing pictures and see what other people are doing, see the extreme angles and the power, like you, you, those, those muscles on the horse's shoulder there. Um, you know, you want to see those really close. You want to see them in detail. You want to see the sunlight bouncing off of them. You want to be able to see the hair, um, you know, going in different directions. Like all of that stuff is important, those details. And if you're this far away and at this boring of an angle, it's, it's just not going to pop off of the frame for that. So, um, there's lots of barrel racing pictures, uh, on my Instagram. You can go to Matt Cohen photo and look at those. You can do a Google search. I think pretty quickly you'll see the difference between pictures that have some thought put into them and pictures where somebody just set up a chair at one of the barrels and just started shooting. Um, but you know, think about what makes barrel racing cool, the dirt flying around the muscles of the horse, the balance, the abnormal abnormal angle that the horse you know it's not the horse isn't straight up and down going around a barrel you want to show that lean you want to show like how close they all are to tipping over um you know maybe the connection between the horse and the rider like these are all things that you want to shoot and these are all like smaller targets than oh yes a horse and a rider in a barrel like if, if you're just thinking in terms of the macro aspect of it you're going to miss all the little details that make pictures yeah. No, I think I, what really bothers me really is like what Matt said. It's the the fact that you're 
you're in a position where it's you're not high enough and you're not low enough like it's just that in between thing everything is just really in between you know so the focal length is in between the angle is in between and the framing of it also is just horrendous because of the fact that you've got all that crap in the background and that fucking fence and you have to oh my god like it's it's okay this is part of the job so i'm gonna say it again but you have to like have a look at these like pictures and you kind of have to like realize like oh well that thing in the background is really bothering me and if it's really bothering me more likely than not um it will probably bother other people who are looking at it so you kind of want to like say okay so if that's there um, I want to shoot from this particular angle, then I have to either go up, further up, or further down. And that's kind of how it's like, you have to be really thinking, like, it's, this is a total everything thing, you know? Like, you just can't concentrate, like, yeah, if, you're, if you've got a long lens, and if you're shooting just uh, the muscle of the, the, the horse, or just her, or whatever... But if you want to shoot, like, in a wide angle, and if you want to get, like, just, I don't know, the atmosphere of barrel racing, then you have to really see, like, what's actually behind the subject and whether or not can it's you, clear enough to do it. What? If I send you if I send you a picture real quick, can you put it up on there so that we can look at it at the same time? No, I don't think I can. I don't want to mess it up because if I press some button, if it goes away. No, no, you can just open up a new tab or something, right? Yeah, I think I can. Okay, I want to. I want to do that. Um, everybody can just give us a second because I think this will be important. You're sending me what? From where? I'm sending you a link. Okay. Uh, like via Skype. Yeah. Chun, chun, chun. Oh, that's your Skype window. <laughs> this is fun. Listen, this is, let's keep on going. You can figure it out. All right. So. No, no, no. no. Just what? do it. Hmm. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this is not how I would ordinarily shoot barrel racing. I just wanted to do that this one day just because of the background was really clean and I just wanted to use it. But look at the power in the horse. Look at the horse's back leg, how it's, you know, there's so much torque going on there that it looks like it's going to rip off, right? There's also the front feet are off the ground and all that dirt is flying around behind them. And then the angle that the horses, look at the, the angle from where the, the hooves are to where the horse's head are. It's like a 45 degree angle, you know, like straight diagonal. Um, look how the, the rider is like, you know, not even on the back of the horse. She's on the side of the horse, like controlling for the balance and all of that. You have the, um, the rein in her hand and then the whip coming off the side and then her hair and then the expression on her face. Like all of those things are working together and there's a clean background. There's nothing distracting back there. See if you can do something like this first before you start trying to be like too wide or letting in too much of the background or something like that. Like show the power and only that, right? Let's, let's start there. Yeah, I mean, th this is... Uh, uh, yeah, it's a just, fucking you can't disaster. Do, <laughs> yeah, you can't do this, right? This, you um, have the worst of bad. everything. Like, you know, this isn't... Um, you know, there, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing going on here. You can't even really see who the rider is because the arm is in the face. You've cut off the back, you know, the <laughs> light pole is in there that way too much of it is in focus. There's way too much empty space on the left side. Like, I think it's, you know, I'm glad that you found us. There's lots of help, but I, I would, I would look at barrel racing pictures. I would look at the basics, um, you know, just in a regular Google search. Then I would go onto my Instagram, Matt Cohen photo, look at the barrel racing pictures there. Um, and then, you know, let's, let's put some more thought into this instead of just 
you know, I was just sitting there and blasting away. Like, you know, this is even like further away from the right track than the other one was. Uh, that's a fucking disaster, this one. Uh, Simon West. Yeah, this doesn't need to be. Yeah. That's okay. I, I like saw this idea, picture. Better than. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I don't think it's even focused. Like, I don't can't really That's, even tell. It, it looks like some of the umbrellas on the on the far side are the most in, in focus. focus, right? And maybe know. maybe the trees behind them, and it looks like it's off axis a little bit. I really like this idea a lot. It, it is difficult focusing when you have you know like so much of the frame is you know is set up to screw you. Like they, you know, the camera is going to want to find a blade of grass in the foreground and focus on that instead of the very small things that are moving really fast in the background. Um, I, I don't know exactly what the answer is, especially if you're not, um, I don't know if you're, if your gear is out of calibration or if you're, you know, using a lens that's slower to focus or whatever, you might have a really hard time doing something like that. But it really is, it, you know, if you're going to have like, this is what we're talking about by living on the edge, you know, finding the edges, like this picture is, what at least three quarters grass in the front and then another quarter you know or 20 percent trees in the background and then the only things that we're looking at are you know very very small in it like that's definitely looking for the edge and that's good but when you're doing that you really do have to nail it right like those horses should be like the crispest things or you should, you know, frame it completely differently so that if you wanted the umbrellas to be in, in focus because they look cool or whatever, and that's the splash of color, then the horses and whatever need to be out of, you know, completely out of focus, but they can't be like in that uh, almost focus. Like that's the killer. You don't want, mm. you don't want it to be like a little bit out of focus, right? They either need to be the background or they need to be in focus. I mean, I like the, I think what makes this picture really interesting is the railing on the left. That kind of like for me, if it's not there, I think it would be less of a picture. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but it's just, you know, like that Matt crane, said, like, oh, that yeah, crane the crane's really good, bad. Though. You just Photoshop it. <laughs> <laughs> just Photoshop it out. No one's going to know. Um, uh. It's, you know, it's one of those things that like I would probably... Like, I think it's a really, really good idea. So if you get another chance to do it, I would definitely, definitely do it. Um, it's just, there are a lot of like, also like small distracting things that you kind of have to like figure out how to get rid of. <clears throat> a is the, obviously the crane and B is the fucking house on the left as well. Um, not easy because I don't know, like it, you don't really get that many angles in the race course track. Horse racing I would trick. like to see I would like to see what it looked like you know because you could just wait until they got closer I think and then shoot diagonally yeah yeah shoot diagonally tighter so that you just have the turf I don't know if you would be able to fit the wall in at that point but I think it would be more interesting if you just had um the horses in the foreground and the those umbrellas and the trees in the background I think that would look pretty cool yeah. I just I just think it's tough like this this has a lot to do with the statue one from before it's like the distances aren't working for you like you have the the one group of horses and then the other group of horses and then you have the house in the background and the crane in the background and then you know it's what you really want yeah. you, there's the things are too far apart like the wall and the turf and the trees and the riders and you want all of those things to be more tightly bunched or at least not have so much space in between them Okay. Mm, I need, I need, I need a bit more. Like I understand it's ass caught, but there, the the guy has to be doing a bit more to kind of like mark the event. Like if he won a race or something, then this just doing that to me is just not enough. I'm just trying to think like yeah. what else like it, has it to would be, be going, like, but well, you would want to be closer with a wide angle lens. You know, the the problem is like this with a long lens looks like a TV shot. This with a wide lens, if you were right behind him and got the ascot through his arms or something like that, would look way cooler than that because it would be like the he would be so much bigger than the sign and the perspective and all of that would be way cooler. It's a bit like, 
it's just t- it's a TV mm. shot. It's just you know the closing of the race, like the guy just riding off into the sunset. Yeah, but I don't really know like whether or not he could actually got even closer to this. You know what I mean? Well, he so, might like, not. He might not have been able to get closer. But the point is, that's what would have made it a better picture. Like you, mm. you can't like no. He would have had to have like let's say his hands were clasped and he was doing that you know like congratulating himself kind of you know thing on either side of his face or whatever, like that would have been okay. Or if he you know double fist you know like pumps or something like that would be fine like you know if if you're trying to eke out the most you can from this position yes you need him having like a more victorious or energetic or whatever kind of expression but if you're trying to make a more interesting picture all around then you're talking about getting closer with a wider lens yeah i'm just thinking like from from this particular distance and angle (sighs) yeah it's difficult though it's one of those pictures that you probably take it like if I took this picture from because I don't know I was told to or this is the only one I could possibly think of from that distance I'm like uh, well it's Ascot's there and so you can see the guy doing something but it doesn't like it's not obvious enough what he's doing right to like make it it's just like not fantastic enough like if he actually had one if he was doing other poses like what Matt was saying like if he was pumping his fist or something that would have been a lot more interesting. I think the pose itself is just a little letdown. If he didn't do anything else, just nothing you can really do. From that distance, that pose, just nothing. So, but if you missed whatever else he was doing before or after, and that's your fault. That's definitely your definitely your fault. So you gotta think that as well. Like it's very important what the pose is and like what signifies, especially like when you cannot see the person's face. Right, so it's like a very, very. You need to really sell it from the back, and it's like that pose then has to be very well, that, grand. To that's the make, problem with it, what? right? They they probably go through here like that's where the winners go, right? Which means it's predictable. Which means you know this wasn't the place to be, and it and it was predictable where you should have been. Mm. Hard to say. No, it's not. <laughs> No, no, no. There's I'm a reason all, that all sign is there, right? No, no, no like you all, know, all Mash is saying is that, like, I think that's basically if that's the only place he was allowed to go, and this is the only dis like that's the distance he actually had between that guy and 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 the the photographer. Yeah. Like all I'm actually saying is that I, it had to like that the gesture that he had had to be more interesting for this yeah, to work. Yes, yeah, yes, I agree saying. with that. But what but what I'm saying is that I'm guessing that this is a, you know, they do this, it's a ceremony. They do the yeah, same thing the after the race. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Right. So, be, so be somewhere else. That's, it, there's there's not much you're going to get here unless somebody's really giving it to you. Yeah. And then, every, you know, honestly, at that point, everybody's doing the same thing, right? If he turns around and gives you like a, you know, like a huge celebration or whatever, every single other person who's in the same place is going to get the same picture as you. Mm. So I wouldn't want to be there. All right. So two more to go. DC Usyk 62. And the, the, the two men on a horse is yeah, trying, to do, trying to capture an animal. I have no idea what that animal looks like. It's a steer. This is team repping. So, um, but like that's what yeah, that's I, the point, though, right? So like I'm actually saying that like, if I don't know what this thing is, like I'm looking at it, thinking, hey, first of all, like if I don't know what the sport is, right? I'm looking and thinking, oh, that's cool. Like I like the moment movement thing. I kind of feel like he photoshopped it, the whole movement thing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Well, this Just is one of my students, it. so let's assume that she didn't photoshop it. But I don't know. She could have. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you are be... in rodeo, if you're in rodeo, you know what this picture is. But it's also going to be very confusing to you, and you probably think that it's blurry. And if you are not in rodeo, there's not enough here to let you really know what's going on. I think that's probably the shortest way to say all of it. Um, I, I think it's a good effort. I think that you, you know, obviously you match the speed of the the header, but not the healer, or maybe he was bouncing around too much. This is a hard picture because there are two people and two horses and one steer and you're trying to match the speed of all of them, which is almost never going to happen. It's not a bad effort. The one thing I would say is this, 
if you want this picture to read better, you would want there to be more distance between the header and the healer. And, you know, this, this was a, you know, not a professional situation and the, obviously the steer wasn't going fast enough to spread the header and the healer out. And that's probably, um, you know, where the problem is coming from. So I would say, you know, if, if you want to keep trying this, that's fine. But, you know, maybe the angle that you would want is more to your left so that you can get some more space in between them so that it would read a little bit better as a team roping picture. Um, but, you know, I I don't know. You could continue doing this if you want. And just, you know, if you do it enough times, you'll at least match the speed of the the header and the healer. And I think that would be better. Um, you know, but this is limited, right? You're not, you're never going to shoot a whole day of team roping like this. People aren't going to buy the pictures and really all you need is one good one. So figure out a time where you can devote all the time you want to getting that one good one and then move on to something else. I mean, the, the problem that I have with this is that it looks like a cheap painting on a cheap motel, the color and it color actually like means quite a lot. Like it just like you know it it conveys like different feeding different thing. The that's, yeah, that's it, a, that's a good point. Yeah, and also it's not slow enough. It's one twentieth of a second. So <laughs> I think it's when you when we we've talked about this. Like when you pan something, it is very because she said. Right, she wants to like get rid of all the crap in the background, which is fine. But like one twentieth isn't isn't slow enough. And I'm assuming like this event. Well, okay, like, scroll, wait, hold on. Let me let me on. let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. So one twentieth isn't slow enough. But the thing is, like, if I had had actually shot this, right? She shot this in a tenth of a second. There's no. It's it's because I'm assuming like this thing, like you kind of go everywhere. So they're not going in a straight line. And therefore, it's very difficult for her to actually like get. I don't know. How long do they do this for? Like, how like is there yeah, a time limit? Yeah, it's very it's it's a it's a single digit second situation. Ah, uh, it's very very difficult. So yeah, I mean, I would like for her to actually try again to actually do it. Um, I would also just like make is it a he or a she? I don't really know. Is it he? She. 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 Yeah, and I think like the idea is there. <clears throat> I'm not saying that it isn't there. Like I think it's very, very good. But really, for me, it's the color looks like crap. And then scroll down. What? What? Can you scroll down again? Yeah. Okay. And here's, I think it's here's like, the reason. Like, can I just finish? Can I just hold calm you, down? You can, but you. Well, I'm just. Can, I have to finish my thought. Ugh. Um. Why? Because like I have to actually come from a person who doesn't know about but steer roping or whatever, right? This is very important that like it's not like everybody actually knows what the sport is, right? This is very very. It's, I think it's a very important thing. You kind of have to show it to people who has no idea or who don't really care about the sport, and that person has to say, "Well, that's really fucking cool." Because I think as a sports photographer, like that's what your job is to actually do is like make a picture create a picture that people who don't know about the sport say well that is a fucking cool shot i don't know what the hell is going on but it looks really cool and i love the idea that you actually had here but yeah i think it's a matter of like if it takes like a couple of seconds to do it i still want you to actually try to like shoot like tenths of a second or fifths of a second and then try to actually get this down pat i think that'll be really, really cool if you get that if you get it I think that would be amazing. But I think we should just like just try to like just get one person uh, in focus rather than actually two because I think it would just be inf- impossible to actually get two because it's like if it finishes like in 10 seconds and you just fucked. Voila. I'm done. Oh, you're done? Yeah. Okay. Um, now that Rio is done scolding me, I will say that she was at F22, which is almost certainly the maximum of that lens, right? And yeah, so what you're gonna need to do if you wanna get slower than 120th is you need to get a neutral density filter because um, you're just, you're gonna run up against limits when you're shooting in the sun um, that you, you know, you just can't, even at F22, you're not gonna be able to get this as slow uh, a, a so shutter cool. speed as you can. So I know which, we have, we have no idea which, like, which ISO she was shooting at as well. 
I, I'm going to guess that it was pretty the low. lowest possible. If, if she was at F22, right? There's no other reason to go up that high. So um, all of that is going to hurt. Um, awesome. The other drawback, though, is when you're shooting horses is that the slower you go, the exponentially harder it gets. When you're shooting motorsports or something that's very continuous like that, going slower really, you know, it's just a matter of adjusting your speed uh, to match mm. the um, the car. Like whatever shutter speed you're at is whatever shutter speed you're at. It doesn't get easier or harder. When you're shooting horses, it gets a lot harder because you don't just have the right to left motion or the left to right motion. You have up and down as the horse goes. And that's not a continuous thing either. So as you're shooting and you're panning, the horse is going up and down. So there's no, you know, you're not going to be able to control for all of that. And you're really hoping for luck the slower and slower you go. So when you're trying to shoot more things, five things in this case, and you're, you know, you're looking at the shutter speed and you're saying they're not going fast enough for me to be at 120th then you're probably at that point having to eliminate one of the things or two of the things or three of the things that you're shooting because you're asking too much at that point. You can't be at one fifth of a second and get a steer, two horses and two people going from right to left at different angles, also going up and down. No, that's why I was looking at the speed information because there is a limit to, you know, to all of this, to what you can do. And I think you found basically that at one twentieth you can still just get the right to left motion but I guarantee you that if you drop down further than that, the motion of the horse's head, like you can see on the Palomino horse, there's definitely more motion going on than there is of the of the head horse that's coming right at you. So I would say think about what you're doing. You know, maybe pick out one subject, maybe do the tie down roping or the barrel racing and see how low you can go there. Because with those things, uh, the action is moving faster and you can have a slower shutter speed. So that takes out some of the up and down motion. Um, I would say do do those things. But if you're trying to get five things in focus and Not match the possible. speed and and very slow, you're it's you know you're you're asking for a once in a lifetime kind of shot. Which you know if you want to try that every once in a while, that's fine. But it's you know it's going to be a lot of misses. Yeah, that's the fun. That's half the fun. The misses are half the fun, really. And this is it, Alicia Hargis. So this is another. It's a fucking the barrel racing podcast and barrel racing video Ugh. <laughs> no because like the, the 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 previous picture was really like to me was really really promising and like we get stuck with this or like the other one which was a complete disaster so yeah so Alicia. let's let's stipulate that if you are shooting barrel racing and you can freeze the action and get it in focus, that it's time to move on to something else. Like yeah. you, you've done this right. And that's, that's fine. People, you know, whatever people buy these pictures. So if that's part of your business or something, then okay. But that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is we're looking for the edges. Like D was doing, um, like a couple of the other people that whose pictures we were looking at training ground is not for um show us your conventional pictures where the lighting was really bad and um you know i had to make it black and white because the color was bad or something um what do we have so she's saying like she's not shooting at uh, f2a because like she wants to get everything in focus like why why do you want to get everything in focus well it, it does it looks Okay, so from where she's shooting here, it, it's not going to make that much difference. But let's say the rider, let's say you were in, or the horse was in between you and the rider, and the difference was three feet or two and a half feet or something like that, and you had the rider in focus and the horse's face in front of you, not you know, not in focus, but not quite out of focus. That mm. that looks a little bit distracting. So, and the there, fucking there is a barrel is also distracting as well, right? Yeah, I mean, no. like, if, if I, I, you know, I don't luckily ever have to shoot situations where they have, like, phone numbers or whatever on the barrel. 828-837-5404. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, I would do my best to, to minimize the presence of the barrel in my pictures if I was shooting, mm. you know, in, in this place. Like, it's just, like, you think about, like, you get, like, that once-of-a-lifetime shot, and that shot is forever, you know, just an ad for... Uh, I don't even know what that is. Almost uh, something. Refrigeration. 
anyway, uh, I would I would try to minimize those um, for sure. But there's there's nothing wrong with stopping down. You know, if you have a purpose of getting the rider in, and the horse both in focus, if that's what you're trying to do. But I would I would want to do that at 2.8, but just by composition. So I would want to set up where the horse's face and the rider's face were going to be the same distance away, so that I could be at 2.8. And also getting both of those in focus and not anything else in focus like that. That would be how I would solve that problem. Mm. Uh, but anyway, th- there's I'm not telling you not to shoot like this because you do need to justify your time. And if you're selling prints or whatever, then you do need to do things like this. But for what we're doing here, I want to see you taking more chances and showing us less conventional pictures because, you know, you're here like we don't need to teach you to be where you are right now but you need to follow us along to something that's not as conventional as this and like it's, it says it's uh it was shot during nighttime so i kind of want to like see like how the lights were as well because i think you could probably do a lot more with the lights i don't know if it's like a spot well, i don't think it's a spot really but yeah i don't know i don't know it, it's just you know if you if you don't have good light to start out with converting stuff to black and white just looks like you converted it to black and white because it was yellow or something like yeah. that. So, you know, that's, this isn't, a, I, I know it, it's like a, a better, you know, it, it's more visually pleasing or whatever than what the original is, but it's not good enough. You know, it's not, you're not making up for the fact that it's not very interesting by just making it into black and white. So I would, I would definitely not spend a whole lot of time converting things into black and white. I would spend way more time thinking about how you're going to solve the problem while you're shooting rather than doing it after yeah the composition thing as well like it's not really easy like you know of all the barrel racing like photos i've actually seen because the fucking barrel is always there and it's also repetitive movement as well though because you're just going around right it's just you're just basically going around it's, just, it's like yeah it's all the same. yeah so yeah. the movements are basically limited like they don't do like a lot of movements and obviously the big thing is when they go around the corner when they have to basically go tight as possible so you can only get it then and then you have to like kind of like i'm just thinking in my head like all the angles you can shoot from you know like three like 180 degrees of just like all the angles 260 degrees and there's not that many options to do right so you kind of have to like make the best out of it um i would definitely like start thinking about you know having a very long lens or very wide lens and see if it actually is going to be what's going to work out but when it's like that the movements are always going to be the same um and you the distance you cannot really change because you cannot get near these horses because they'll probably almost likely kill you if they step on you and i think it's a very very difficult thing to do to find something new out of it right so yeah i don't know i think the i think everyone should do the uh whatever the thing there the team roping thing is a lot more interesting because a lot more happening in different things it's not the same movement all the time because like the calf just goes everywhere right so you have to catch them with a rope right it's it? the more the more yeah the more things are involved the more unpredictable it is yeah the more like uh different shots you can get so that's why like all the the the, the what is it um uh, race car thing is just really you've seen you've seen it once you've kind of seen it all type of thing there's not that many i follow this this japanese guy who shoots like pretty much race cars and like i've been seeing his photos and i'm kind of thinking like yeah man like they're kind of the same after a while he's very good at what he does but it's like yeah because it's a fact it's a car (laughs) it goes in a straight line and so Yeah. yeah it's very difficult like it really really is like i've had this conversation with like people if someone asked me like what kind of sports do you want to shoot and i said i don't want any repetitive movement i don't want anything that goes in a straight line because that's the those are the worst thing possible because you're so limited as to what you can actually do and you just exhaust options and say okay well as long like unless i can get closer to them or really far there's nothing else i can do because the movement is exactly the same over and over and over and over so yeah that's um with sports photography like it really depends on the sport you know to make things easy for you or make it very difficult you just get the same shot over and over and over so 
it's also very important that if you want to actually start choosing a new sport to shoot, you have to think, okay, is this going to really give me a lot of challenges? Is it going to give me a lot of opportunities to shoot differently? And if the answer is no, like you said, repetitive same movements um, in a straight line, you should probably like, you know, see something, go and shoot something else. Just a thing. Because like I chose certain sports just based on that as well. And whether or not you can get close to them as well is very important. Yeah. So if you can't yeah, do it, I mean, well. yeah. yeah, I I do that also. And that's one of the reasons why I shoot rodeo. Um, you know, and that's, I don't know. I don't know what the what this market is like. I don't know what pictures people buy, and I don't really care. But um, you should try to figure out how to make pictures that, you know, maybe before or after the run that maybe show more of the connection between the horse and the rider or something. But mm. it's not just going around the barrels or whatever there's more to it than this and there's certainly more creative possibilities when you're not restricted to you know being 20 feet away at, at the at the least and you know dealing with leopard print barrels yeah, with ads on them you know it's just like not you're not setting yourself up for success here i mean it's it's fine for practicing or whatever but it's not yeah. um you know you're never going to get a portfolio picture like this well, that wraps up our wonderful training ground. If you're interested in learning more about Big Lens Fast Shutter, please go to BigLensFastShutter.com if you want to give us money. Always welcome. Patreon.com slash BLFS. I guess we'll see you guys next in the podcast. And I'm going to try to make this whole thing work. Goodbye. Did I do it? Is it stop recording?